Hey folks, it's Spitz from Digital Pharma East in Philadelphia 2012. It's my pleasure to have Joey Barnes, Senior Director of Business Development for In Touch Solutions. Conference is very interesting. Uh, there's a confluence of all sorts of things that are going on within digital health. And you've been with In Touch for about five years now. Can you give us a little overview between the then and the now, including especially some fresh stuff that uh, you see working on? Yes, I think things have definitely changed. I came from the QSR industry um, over to the pharma industry, and we were already doing social and mobile for those audiences, and it was neat to kind of bring um, a new perspective and be prepared to do and think about what's next for pharma at that time. But now, as with the panel that um, we saw yesterday with a lot of the clients with social initiatives, everybody's starting to play. Um, so again, I think the disease states and the therapeutic categories will kind of dictate or determine how social you can be, but mobile's also becoming um, very important as well. So what are some of the impediments that you see are still in the way, and what are some of the fun things that you're doing and advocating to your clients to, now that they are more sensitized to it, they are completely buying into social, given the billion user Facebook pressure point. Right. Mobile now, the iPad has revolutionized everything. So it's pretty much taken for granted that everyone is social, everyone is mobile, even in the healthcare space. How do you overcome some of the uh, immediate obstacles to get them to really embrace the potential? I think for each therapeutic category or drug specifically, there are different op op obstacles. Um, one thing we still see clients talk about a little bit, but you don't hear in the in the conferences and such is um, the worry about off-label promotion from a social standpoint versus the adverse events, which was brought up yesterday in yesterday's session. Uh, but I think uh, it's just identifying how to really have a true conversation now. Being present in the space is just not enough. Absolutely. And what kind of prescriptive recommendations do you have in terms of working with your clients? Um, do you advocate um, using boilerplate responses? Do you have a particular approach to handling fair balance, let's say, within Bobo that can assure clients that it is relatively safe to trot and it's worth at least dipping their feet in the space? I think it's a mix of both. I think you have to uh, really work closely with the MedReg teams, educate them and become partners with them. But I also believe that once you've established that trust and relationship with those groups that you can do a mix of both. They're what I like to call vanilla posts, things where you can just say thank you or inter interact or engage with something that's not um, anything to do with promotion of the product or the label of the product. And then for those that are, you need to be a little bit more um, structured and there needs to be process behind what you say and do. Great, and I'm, I'm noticing there's a shift now between unbranded and branded communication. There used to be just a firewall in between them and there. Now there's a little bit of, of push with regard to disease state education with patients that roll into a more branded discussion. Are you noticing that within the regulatory environment right now and are there ways that you kind of push the envelope with clients and ultimately uh, get where we need to go? I, I definitely see that change. There's a benefit with the unbranded and the popularity of it coming back a little bit, I think, has to do with the health literacy topic that everybody's been talking about and how it helps in that situation. Again, different med reg teams have different conservative levels or comfortability with that, but um, there's definitely cert certain situations in which I believe unbranded communications are critical, especially if you're first to market or it's a new indication, and none of that's changed, I don't think. And along with those content changes, what are some of the hints that you can give us from your own vantage point about some trends that are breaking, let's say, within the next year or two, given, given all the transformation and excitement within digital health. Oh, wow. I think you stumped me there. I'd have to think about that. Mobile, uh, the multi-screen approach. That's one area that might be big and we're doing a lot of that and we're seeing clients now ask for it even before it's recommended and of course the cost of a responsive design site is a little more to start with but if you do have multiple platforms or your audience is using multiple screens the initial investment up front is worth it because the cost to uh, make updates and changes will win out in the long run but yes it's probably the hottest thing right now for yeah me. that makes a lot of sense too and it's like we're, we're almost designing everything for mobile right it's a whole different way of looking at things simpler navigation much straightforward messaging attention spans are decreasing even more than they have been. So essentially designing for mobile top of mind is probably a recommendation and even desktop you know, web applications, websites are being responsive in that. And with the new iPad version coming out, and that just adds another screen level, if you're already in a responsive design setting, those new screens and new screen sizes will be easy to, uh, to accommodate when they arrive. 
Terrific. Joey Barnes, folks, with InTouch Solutions, talking about responsive design, the future of digital health. It's Fitz from Digital Pharma East in Philly, 2012. Signing off, and thanks.